Oh, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hey, what's going on out there? Get Bubba off that porch. Bubba, get in here and sit yourself down. Now, you know Anna from Alabama got a long spoon. She will whack you in the side of your head. <laughs> Open up that Bible. You need some Jesus. I'm so sorry. Rev Eddie here. Hey, there's our Warriors for Jesus. Any more Warriors out there? Come on, Warriors! Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for another day, another opportunity to come forth and do your work, your will, your way. Another day to see your mighty and miraculous hand move in our lives, our circumstances, our situations, our family. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit excited today. Boy, did we have a Bible study on Facebook Live last night. Glory be to God. Still fired up. Amen. But we just want to say thank you to all of you that are following on YouTube and Facebook. Just know in your hearts we are in this to win this with you. We family y'all. Amen. And you are the best part of this ministry. Oh, glory. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, you want to chat something out, get something off your chest, give your testimony, it's okay. I'm available. Come over to Facebook and search Rev Eddie Wiggins. Now, on Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word, no space, no dash, no dots, no periods, just Rev Eddie Wiggins. Message me. We'll exchange numbers. That way we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that our almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-caring, all-loving, all-powerful, miracle-working God is going to work it out. Thank you, Jesus. A shout out to our favorite island in the whole wide world. Over in the Philippines, the island of Mindanao and all the beautiful people there. From Dipilog City to Palanco to Dipaton City to Barangay Districts 1, 2, and 3, and all the way up into those mountains. Oh, we just thank God for all of you. We love you so much. We miss you. Can't wait to get back in your arms. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for following this podcast brought to you in a broadcast by our favorite DJ in the whole wide world, DJ Joe Ryan. Glory, glory, glory be to God. And DJ Good Spinner, DJ RF. Hallelujah. And Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love, and it's time for the healing hour on the mighty KISS FM Polanco, 90.1 on your FM radio dial. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for these warriors, for thy kingdom. Continue to use them mightily for your glory and the salvation of souls. Shield and protect them in every way, Lord, in all they do and everywhere they go. And provide for their every need with an abundance left over in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep the mighty Kiss FM Polanco lifted up in our prayer. Amen. <laughs> and let's keep Pastor Nelia and that on fire ministry she's doing for the Lord from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will listen that they too may be saved. Working with Pastor Mary Jane Pilare, they have become a dynamic duo for Christ's kingdom. Let's keep them, their ministry, all the children in the orphanage they're working with, all the people in the villages that they're ministering to, and Pastor Nelia's son, Benny, lifted up in our prayers. We're praying for Benny for an abundance that every need be met. 
that he may go to college and graduate with honors in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory, glory, glory. Let's send a shout out and keep praying for our pastors over in Australia, senior pastor Charlotte and Harding is their last name, and Pastor Dale and Senior Pastor Clayton and Pastor Vivian and all our pastors over there on that continent. This ministry is so blessed to have so many pastors on fire for the Lord. Let's keep them, their ministry, their Wednesday night meeting, and all they're doing for Christ's kingdom lifted up in our prayers. A shout out. Let's keep praying for Samanga and her ministry over in Zambia, Africa. And let's pray for Minister Deborah Atwell on that beautiful hot smoking island called Trinidad Tobago, just on fire for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will listen on that island. And we want to continue to pray for her niece-in-law, totally healed. I'm a miracle of healing in her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in every area of her body, whole and complete right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for, for Pastor Mugoda Stanley and his wife in ministry over in Uganda, Africa. And a shout out. Let's keep praying for our fellow warrior, Sam Knight. Glory. How you doing, Sam? We thank God for you and all you're doing for Christ's kingdom, this ministry, and the public that you just can't stop serving. Keep going, keep going. Amen. <laughs> Let's continue to pray for our spiritual mentors, coaches, and teachers, Coach Randy Lowe and his lovely wife, ministry, family, relatives, and loved ones, and Coach Gekka. Coach G, as some of us are allowed to call him, his lovely wife Kay, and their ministry, family, relatives, and loved ones. And I got something from Coach for us this morning. He says, wearing a cross near my heart each day is a daily reminder of my life purpose and what God did for you and for me. Ask for the Holy Spirit to give you hope and peace, possible, possible even in a broken world. And then he says, the cross is an ever-present reminder that man is unable to save himself. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Coach. Let's continue to pray for us. Protection and provision for our brother in Christ, Rod. Hey, Rod. Let's keep my sisters, Karen and Jan, my auntie Annette, my niece Elena, and her new baby girl, and my nephew Michael lifted up in our prayers. And a shout out, let's keep praying for Gail and Tex. Yeah. We just love our Gail and Tex so much. And we thank you, Father, for your mighty hand upon them and this present situation that they're going through. Father, glorify yourself through this situation and bless them beyond belief in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's continue to pray for their miracle grandchild, Mateo, totally delivered, restored, and healed in Jesus' precious and mighty name. A shout out. And let's keep praying for our fellow warrior, Jay Clark. Ah, we just love you so much, Jay, and we thank God for you and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry and for Christ's kingdom. Let's keep Cheyenne and all of her children lifted up in our prayers, along with Miss Helena Gore and her entire family and our beloved Ladera Turner. These eyes. She was in Bible study last night. We had ourselves a good time. Amen. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus, for Ladera and all you've done, all you're doing, and everything you plan on doing in her life, heart, mind, soul, spirit. Oh, Lord, touch your heart. One touch from you, Lord, we read yesterday in our podcast. One touch from you can heal a heart like it ain't never been healed before, like a heart transplant. Lord, keep your mighty hand of protection and healing and provision and deliverance upon her and all 
her family and relatives, especially her sister and that miracle granddaughter that we have just grown to love so much. Lord, let only your mighty and perfect will be done in that miracle granddaughter's life. In Jesus, precious and mighty name, let's keep evangelist Tammy and her daughter and ministry lifted up. In our prayers, we will continue to pray for all our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and all of our ne nieces and nephews. They are in Tremendous need of our prayers. All of our children, all the children in this country, and all around this world. Let's continue to pray for our fellow warrior and brother in Christ, Scott Woodall. We just thank God for you, Scott, and all you are to us, this ministry, Christ's kingdom. You just keep going, young warrior. And we thank you, Jesus, for Scott. And all you're doing, all you've done, and every good plan you have for his life and each of his family members, especially his sister and wife, Lord. Oh, continue to work in them, and Lord, reveal yourself to them in a very real, powerful, and undeniable way that they too may fall madly in love with you and serve you for the rest of their days. Glory be to God. All right. We need a package, y'all. We're going to make a big package and put a bow on it. And we're going we to fill that package with our love, our hugs, and our prayers for God's Thunder Twins. Oh, we just love you guys so much. We thank God for you. You are truly the best part of this ministry. And you're why this ministry exists. This wouldn't be a ministry without you. You're that precious, that vital. We just love you so much. And the sun <laughs> always shines on God's thunder twins. And we thank you, Jesus, for sharing your precious daughters with us, these daughters of thunder, as you call them, Lord. And we thank you for your mighty hand of healing, that they are totally healed, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and every area of their bodies whole and complete. Thank you, Lord, for your healing in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, thank you for your delivering hand upon every area of their lives. Oh, shield and protect and heal and deliver their nephews, Jacob and Jamie, and let only your mighty and perfect will be done in their lives. Save Jacob's dad, Ryan, and healing in Kathy's hip right now. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Tim, Heather, Jaden, and Haley lifted up in our prayers. Tim was in Bible study last night. We had ourselves a good time, y'all. And we thank you, Jesus. For traveling grace all over Tim, everywhere he goes and all he does, we thank you for healing this entire family, Tim and Heather and Jaden and Haley, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, in every area of their bodies whole and complete right now in Jesus' name, miracles of healing, deliverance, and provision, miracles for all their needs, restoration like never before in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Christina with a K, Christ in her heart and Christ in her name, down in beautiful downtown Arkansas. <laughs> Let's keep her lifted up in our prayers with that precious baby uh, girl, Gabriella, and her son. We got to pray hard for her son and her grandmother and all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every good thing that God has put on her heart to do for Christ's kingdom. Let's continue to pray for our fellow warrior, Ikina, from Houston, Texas. We just thank God for you, Ikina, and all you are doing in and throughout this ministry. You are truly a blessing to this ministry, and we stand with you for your healing and deliverance. And let's continue to pray for Ken and Cindy. We thank God for the both of you and all you guys are doing in and throughout this ministry. You are truly a blessing to me and all that are in this ministry, and we thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand upon Ken and Cindy, and their marriage, their children, family, relatives, and loved ones, their home, their places of employment, 
and their finances. Lord, pour them out a miracle in their finances that will knock their socks off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep our fellow warrior Jesse lifted up in our prayers. And he was in Bible study last night. Oh, we had ourselves a wonderful time in the Holy Spirit. We thank God for you, Jesse. And we thank God for this miracle that you are about to receive a new job, a great job, that you'll be able to have a car and your own private sanctuary with the Lord. And we want to continue to pray for Jesse and his entire family, especially his uncle and mom, that they too would fall in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, and now our beloved Adrena Turner, the quiet star. (laughs) Hallelujah. We thank God for you, girl, and all you are doing for Christ's kingdom, this ministry, and all those that the Lord has placed in front of you to be a blessing to. Your work is exceptional, and we thank God. God for you. And we thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand upon her. Continue to use her in a mighty way for your glory and the salvation of souls. Healing power, Lord, upon Adrena and her mom and dad and all her family, relatives, and loved ones. Be with them every step of the way. Totally healed from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies whole and complete right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory! Let's keep Brian lifted up in our prayers along with our beloved Anna from Alabama. We just love you so much. She lit that Bible study up and put Bubba in his place. Amen? Thanks for the help. And we thank you, Jesus for your mighty hand of protection upon Anna, her beautiful husband, Terry, their gorgeous daughter, Valerie, and those precious, precious grandchildren, Atlas and Odie. Thank you, Jesus. And healing power, Lord, upon Anna, Valerie, and Terry, totally healed, miraculously healed, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, in every area of their bodies, whole and complete right now in Jesus' name, restoration and rehabilitation for Terry like the world has never seen, Lord. And please, Lord, Bring him home soon in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep Anna's son-in-law lifted up in our prayers for his salvation, healing, and deliverance. We got to pray hard, y'all, for my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl Angelina. Pray hard for Angelina, y'all, and Gilbert and Mia. Lord, let only your mighty and perfect will be done in each one of their lives. Shield and protect them everywhere they go. Guide them, Lord, like only you can. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's not forget uh, Scott's prayer. Lord Jesus, we know you're coming soon. But Lord, if you could just delay it a little longer that we may gather more souls for thy kingdom. Our hearts say, Lord, we want to fill heaven to capacity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for for deliverance for Ryan, Moser, and Edgar. Let's keep Anne Ellie Barrios lifted up in our prayers, and we're praying hard for our fellow warrior evangelist Jay and all the work that he's doing for Christ's kingdom. Lord, continue to use him. Continue to use him till his dying breath that he may go out, preach this word, save souls for thy kingdom, open up every door and window of opportunity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory! Let's keep Toya, Brooklyn, and Messiah lifted up in our prayers and our young warrior, Brian Kutzan. He was in Bible study last night along with Anna, and uh, we just thank God for you, Brian, and all you are doing in and throughout this ministry. You are truly a blessing to me and everyone in here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's pray for j from YouTube, healed in the hip right now in Jesus' name, and our beloved Jahan from England. 
We got to pray hard for Jehan, y'all. You know how the devil works. <laughs> He's always after us, especially us soul savers. And she's got a powerful ministry. And we need to lift her up in our prayers. Pray hard. Pray hard. Pray hard for your hand. No matter what it is she's going through, the Lord's got it. He's right there with her. And this, too, will pass in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand. I just love you so much, girl. We all do. And <coughs> we thank you, Jesus, for this powerful ministry that you've been doing through her. Continue, Lord to use her in this mighty way for your glory and the salvation of souls. Allow healing power right now, miracles of healing upon your hand and her mom totally healed from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and every area of their bodies, whole and complete in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, glory. Let's give a shout out and keep praying for our fellow warrior, Derek. Hey, Derek. He was in Bible study cutting up last night. We just thank God for you, Derek, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry and for Christ's kingdom. And we want to pray for Derek and his lovely wife, his beautiful children, and especially that little three-year-old running around about to turn four. Lord, keep your mighty hand upon him. Keep him strong. Shape him and form him and mold him and make him into what you created him to be. Let's continue to pray for Derek's entire family, especially his mother and brother, that they too will come into the true knowledge of this powerful, powerful word of God. Fall in love with Jesus and serve him for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's pray for Coach's friend Kristen. A miracle of healing in her body. We speak life and not death. In Jesus' name, totally heal from head to toe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep Coach's Uncle Wesley lifted up in our prayers for a speedy and miraculous recovery. In Jesus' name, let's keep Terry Johnston over in Owensboro, Kentucky lifted up in our prayers. We're praying against the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry, each and every one of our homes family, relatives, loved ones, and our workplaces. Let's keep Pastor Larry over in Diplog City lifted up in our prayers along with his beautiful family, his lovely wife, his gorgeous daughters, Jaira, Micah, Angelica. Angelica healed in her heart right now in Jesus' name. Micah graduating from college with honors, with every provision met in Jesus' name. And Lord, bless this family that every need be met with an abundance left over in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Glory, who's ready for a word? Come on, warriors! Battle cry. Let's hit this battlefield right now. Out of those war rooms with your war clothes on. Armed and extremely dangerous. Rooted and booted in this word. Glory be to go out. You got your swords? Turn your swords to Matthew chapter 8. And we'll pick up where we left off yesterday. We'll be in verse 5 today. And I will be reading out of the new Living Translation 4. Your E. Amen. Let's back up into yesterday's lesson, just a couple of verses, so we can remind ourselves where we are, so we can comfortably go where the Lord is going to take us today. I'll back up to verse 3. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Today's lesson, verse 5. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Law, my young servant. Now, I have an asterisk there. In some of your translations, it could come back child. 
my young servant, my young child, lies in bed, paralyzed, and in terrible pain. Let's stop right there and get into this scene. See, now we're in the gospel. We get to see the walk of our master, our Lord, our Messiah, our King, our everything, Lord Jesus. How did he walk this walk? What were the words he spoke? What were his actions? You see? And we're going to glean everything we can from our master's walk as a Holy Spirit living in us is empowering us to become more and more like him and focusing on what we're about to go through, this tribulation, these last days, the end of human history as we know it. You see? And knowing in our heart that if we stay with Jesus, we will see him returning for us, coming on those clouds. Glory be to God! And What's so exciting to me is deliverance. Jesus had a deliverance ministry. That's how we would describe his ministry today. However, this is the only ministry there was back in the day. Jesus came. God came in the flesh. <laughs> Manifested in Jesus in his fullness and ministered to his people. And as the disciples caught, caught on, Jesus went up, ascended into heaven, and they got filled with the Holy Ghost, and now they're in ministry. They just copied the work of the Master. They did his works and more, just as we do. So actually, it wouldn't have been called a deliverance ministry ministry back then, this was the church. And this was the power that was in the church. Something happened to history. Oh, y'all like, like something didn't happen. <laughs> something got distorted. The healing line stopped. The power left. And we had so many different types of ministries and churches and religions sprung up throughout the last 2,000 years, that even what we read about, and we read every verse through the uh, book of Acts, it seemed to change. Now a ministry is called this, and a ministry is called this, and a ministry is called that. We are an evangelical ministry. We are a uh, this kind of ministry or that kind of ministry. And now comes the definition, a deliverance ministry. What is a deliverance ministry? The ministry that Jesus did, that the apostles did in the book of Acts. You bring this word, you preach and teach this word. Lay hands on the sick and they're healed. Cast out demons that people would be free to live for Christ. There's a freedom in Christ. You see? And we preach that freedom. We preach the cross, just like Coach Gecker just brought it, that cross we wear over our chest, close to our heart, reminds us that man cannot save themselves. You need a savior, and we got one. His name is Jesus. See, y'all stop that. You stop it right now. You out there, come on, man, no. I didn't come to preach. I just came to teach. But now you see the importance of why we say every podcast, read your word, read your word, read your word. Read it for yourself so you know that you know, that you know that you know what you're trying to be. If you don't know the word, how can you become the word? Jesus is the word. We become one with him when we get in this word. He empowers us to live this walk through the power of his Holy Spirit living in us. He said, and we're going to get to it in these gospels, 
You become one with my word. You become one with my spirit. And my spirit will dwell in you. And I will live in you. And me and the Father, one. And we will make inside you our dwelling place. We need that to do this walk that he's asked us to live. Well, as we just read in verse 5, Let's read it again. When Jesus returned, this is deliverance, y'all. Powerful deliverance. I just love this gospel of Matthew. He knew deliverance. And time after time after time, Matthew keeps bringing. And I'll, I'll point it out every time we get to it. You see, yesterday we read where a man with leprosy got a new life with one touch. Thank you, Lord. That's deliverance. Preach the word. Lay hands on the sick that they be healed. Cast out demons that people will no longer be in bondage and free to live for Christ. So watch this incident. Okay? Verse 5, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer. Now, out of the Greek, that comes back, and maybe in your translation, centurion. What's a centurion? He was a Roman officer in the Roman army, and he had a hundred soldiers underneath him. This is a commander. But who is Rome? Let's dissect this. Who is Rome? Rome is an enemy of Israel. They've enslaved Israel. Jesus was born a slave like everybody else in Israel under Rome. And Rome wasn't no joke. You were a slave to Rome. Oh, you were truly a slave, trust me. Oh, you knew you was a slave. They was hard, hard on folks. A very evil entity they were. Worshiping false gods worshiping their emperors as deity, as God. So they were the enemy. And all those who lived in Israel, you see, these Hebrews were enslaved. You see? Think about that. They always seem to be enslaved to somebody because of their rebellion to God. Well, when Jesus came, you see, they were still enslaved, still evil, led by religious leaders with evil hearts, the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law. But Jesus has come to free them from an enemy far worse than Rome. And that would be their captivity to sin, to doing evil. But this entire nation had been led astray, led away from God in their evilness by their religious leaders, the Sadducees, Pharisees, teachers of religious law. So watch what this says. It says, when verse 5, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Now that's a Roman coming to a Jew. Think about what might have been going through this centurion's mind. Can I go to Jesus? He probably had Jews working in his home. Those that were aware of Jesus were talking in his home as they're working, slaving in his home about the Messiah, that he's here. And miracles are happening everywhere he goes and the words he speaks. Oh, the words that come out of his mouth are just filled with power and authority, unlike... <laughs> Anyone else they've ever heard speak this 
script. And as they're looking at this child or servant in this bed, those in this household might have said, you know what? There ain't no coming back from this. Only one that can save this child would be Jesus. Upon hearing of who Jesus is, the coming Messiah, the true King of the Jews, direct descendant <laughs> of David, and in that tribe of Judah, the kings, you see, He went to Jesus. Well, was he thinking in his heart and mind on the way there, will he accept me? I'm the enemy. These people hate me. Who is this man? Will he hate me too? The Jews can go to him and get healed, but can I, a Roman? Is he prejudiced? Is he filled with hate like everyone else against me? Will his healing power be able to break down walls of prejudice, hatred, rage? Is it for everyone, his power, his mercy, these healing, his words? Is it for everyone or just those he chooses? I mean, he had to have a lot of weight in his head to even come to Jesus. A lot of wondering going on in his mind as he approached the master. <laughs> right? Well, let's keep reading and see what Jesus' response is to him. Verse 7, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Wow! Are you with me? So all that may have worried this this Roman officer, who's probably done some horrible things to the Jews, can you feel his heart filled with hope? He came into the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. That's all Jesus said. He didn't say, now, well, now, you know you got my people enslaved. You know you've done some cruel things to my people. Right? None of that. What hope must have filled this centurion's heart that I, too, can come to the Lord Jesus? I'm welcome? Me? even in the uniform that I represent, even though I'm on the other side, oh, how his heart must have flipped with joy that Jesus was here for him too. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Let's see what happens. Verse 8, but the officer said, Lord, Lord, First word out of his mouth was Lord in verse 6. Lord, my young servant. He knows who Jesus is. And he's got faith that Jesus is everything he said he is. And what the people are declaring and rumors going around that this is the Messiah, the Son of God. This is God himself in the flesh. And with no hope, for this servant that was laying in that bed, that child, <coughs> he too was able to approach God. And he knew who he was because he called him Lord. Look at verse 8. Lord, I am not worthy. Oh, what a humble, broken spirit before God. Broken and contrite spirit. That's all it takes for each and every one of us. You see, I am not worthy. He knows he's standing in the presence of God. That's faith, y'all. But let's 
take a look at what's happening around them. You got a lot of people who are rejecting Jesus, especially the religious leaders, and they're telling others, don't you worship him. Let me catch you worshiping him and see what happens to you, your family, your house, the fields behind your house. Oh, we will hurt you. We catch you worshiping him. Oh, they were evil. And they were quite proficient in leading a nation astray and away from God and into this sinful and rebellious attitude that they carried in their heart. But not this man. This man is doing exactly what each and every one of us should be doing, placing our faith in God. Placing our faith, unwavering faith, that I know that you can fix my situation. I know you can, because nothing's impossible for you. Let's get back into this. Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. <laughs> God in my house? Wow. No, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Oh, I am definitely not worthy. I am a sinner through and through. But see, God overcomes. He's bigger than our situations, our circumstances, our unworthiness. He calls us children. And he loves to forgive. He loves to heal. He loves to bless. He loves to show up in a life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging manner in our lives. It's who he is. So he says, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are. Oh, that's powerful, y'all. You ain't got to come to my house. Just the fact that you said you would. Tickles me pink. But I know you got it like this. You could just say a word. And my servant be healed. That. Is great faith y'all. Are you with me? Was it Jesus' touch. That would heal him? Or could he not even show up. And just say a word. And heal. There were no restrictions in this centurion, Roman officer's heart or mind. You can just say a word. That's how the universe got created. You just said a word. You could just say a word. Listen at this. Let's get into this. He said, just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Wow. Wow. People are running in the crowds to get to Jesus to touch that they be healed. Kneeling before the Lord, asking for healing and forgiveness. This man, and he's not even a Jew, he's got it. The power of God has no limit in his heart and mind. And that's the way our faith should be. We don't have to wait till Sunday to get our miracle. He can give it to us right now. He can heal us right where we are. You see? And so, listen at him continue. He's not done yet. Verse 9. I know this. What does he know? That the, the, a word from the Lord, from where he is, would heal his servant. He says, I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go. <laughs> they better go, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm their superior officer. 
they they have been trained they will go right or come and they come and if i say to my slaves do this oh they do it okay so this man has an understanding of authority and he recognizes jesus as the son of god with all authority over everything on this earth and heaven and in between and in any circumstance and any situation. Okay? He's caught it, right? Where so many have struggled, he already got it in his spirit. When Jesus heard this, verse 10 says, he was amazed. Yeah! Where's this faith coming from? Here I am ministering to my people, and they want to challenge, ask me by whose authority am I doing what I'm doing, you know? Calling me a liar when I tell them I am, <laughs> right? They want to stone me for claiming and displaying to them that God has come in the flesh. They should know God was coming in the flesh because the Old Testament scriptures that they claim to know said, I will be their God and they will be my people and I will live amongst my people. I will walk amongst my people. They had read that and here God is in the flesh doing exactly what he said he would do, yet they reject Jesus. Who this man? Jesus <laughs> is amazed. He's like, when Jesus heard this, verse 10 said, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Now that should put them to shame. That a Roman centurion, an officer in the Roman ar army, got more faith in God than they do. <laughs> he got more faith in Jesus than they do. Shame on you. This is a believer, <laughs> okay? And not God's chosen. God chose a nation to be his own people. You see? But they've always fought him throughout history. Since the moment he said, you're mine, they fought against him. Isn't that shameful? Think about that. But think about where this Roman centurion is in his faith. Okay? He's blowing faith off the Richter scale, somebody. And so Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. I'm sorry, did I make you drip your coffee? <laughs> Put the cup down. There's an exclamation mark in my Bible. He shouted this to the crowd. He wanted them to see the difference in where they were spiritually and where their enemy was. <laughs> Full of faith. You see? They want to hate their enemy but <laughs> your enemy got more faith in God than you do. And you've been chosen by God to follow him, to love him, to teach others about him, to bring other nations to him. Don't forget what God's will was because Jesus is going to break this down. God's will for Israel when he chose them way back long ago, long ago, <laughs> right? He chose them of all the nations. He chose them to be his own. He gave them a diet. He gave them the law. You're mine. I love you. I got your back. I'll fight for you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will set you free. From the time they came out of Egypt, they were chosen to be his own. And yet, from the time they came out of Egypt, <laughs> God's doing everything he can not to kill them all. <laughs> they wasn't even good. 
<laughs> out of Egypt had just come out of that Red Sea, that path the Lord made where they walked across on dry land, still wet behind the ears perhaps from the overspray, right? They ain't even good and dry yet, and they've already rebuilt and built a golden calf. Okay. I mean, from the gate, they were rebelling against God's mighty hand. And his hand is love. His hand is life. God's will for Israel is that they would obey him, love him, get to know him, revere him, and share him with every nation on this planet. His will was that every house in Israel, behind every door, would be a priest. That way nations who would hear about God and come seeking God could go to any door. Pick a door. People from nations are like, so where do we go to find God? Go to Israel. Okay. And then when I get to Israel, where do I go? Don't matter. What do you mean it don't matter? It don't matter. Go to any door. Knock. There will be a priest that knows God and can introduce you to God. And that way the world could come to nation, to the nation of Israel, from anywhere on this planet and find God. That was God's will for Israel. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you act like they didn't say, oh, no. <laughs> oh, they rebelled and fought against God. <laughs> Every step of the way that God's will not be done. Well, <laughs> that's another podcast. But we're the new Israel. We're those who have faith in Christ that will lead anyone from any nation, of any color, of any language, to God. God's will be done, honored, as it is in heaven. Oh, see, y'all trying to get me to peace. Let's get back in this world. All I came here to do was teach. Amen? And so, listen to what Jesus says to the crowds now including this man's faith. He says in verse 10, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Sorry, <laughs> you dropped the chip. Or is that a Cheeto? Yeah, pick that up. Verse 11, and I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east to west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of God. Now, Jews in that audience, especially Sadducees who didn't believe in life after death, a resurrection. And Jesus did minister to this. God is a God of the living. Why would you think Abraham's not alive? <laughs> you see? And so he took them all the way back into Genesis to prove to the Sadducees that there is life after death. Here he is again, confirming this. Watch this. Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east to west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. Us too. He's talking to us. Oh, we will see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? And sit down at the wedding feast in heaven. 
Amen. He said in verse 12, but. That's how he starts off, verse 12. But. Ooh, anytime there's a but in the Bible, you better pay attention to what comes after it. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, <laughs> this was prepared for you, this that I built by my hand in heaven. I did this for you, that you would find salvation in me. He says, but many Israelites, in verse 12, those for whom the kingdom was prepared will be thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You better know that tale. <clears throat> to refuse Jesus is to refuse God. To refuse Jesus is to refuse the only way to salvation. To refuse Jesus is to refuse eternal life with God. There's only one other place to go. And that being that horrible pit of hell. God knew up front. They would never put their faith in him. They'd never shown faith for thousands of years as God revealed himself over and over and over again, came to their rescue over and over and over again, had to punish them over and over and over again for worshiping false idols. That's why I said our relationship with the Lord is like a marriage, and we serve a jealous God, the Bible says. You married to me, but you out cheating on me, spiritual adultery, worshiping idols, false idols. You over there with the devil, dancing with demons, living in sin. When I called you to be my own, I chose you, baby. You see, it was their relationship with God that they struggled with throughout history. And to this day, they will not accept that the Messiah has come. They're still waiting for <laughs> Elijah to come. And Jesus said he already came in the spirit of John the Baptist. Oh, you missed that, huh? You're bad, right? So let's get back into this. So he's telling this Jewish audience, y'all going to burn in hell. Even though I prepared a beautiful home for you, your rejection of me is going to send you into that pit of hell. Let's keep reading here. Verse 13, And Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home! <laughs> because you believed, because you believed, because you believed. God cannot lie, y'all. Everything he says is going to come to pass. Everything he said in the Old Testament, Christ fulfilled. Oh, it's coming to pass. Everything Jesus spoke either came to pass or it's going to come to pass exactly the way he said it. We can count on his word. It is the only truth that we have on this rock called earth. That's why we preach and teach his word Every day, read your word, read your word, read your word. Don't listen to these liars. Don't listen to these YouTube videos, all these liars out here telling you there's no more Holy Spirit. There's more, no more gifts. If you speak in tongues, you're speaking in the language of the devil. There are no more miracles. You're not going through the tribulation we leave before show me that in scripture the other lies once saved all we save the other lies you can buy your way into heaven you can buy a healing you can buy a prophetic word from God 
all these lies. This, right here, is truth. It's the only truth we've got. We have liars in the pulpit. You see? We got liars in mics coming against this word. This is the truth. This is the word to deny. There's other lies that Jesus wasn't God. That he didn't die for the forgiveness of sin. That he never rose from the dead. There's religions teaching that today. They're liars. Don't listen to them. Read your word, read your word, read your word. Stay in the truth. Because I guarantee you we're going to need this truth to get through this tribulation that they say we ain't going through. Oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> when they get there. Now what? You don't have a foundation to stand on. You will fall. And Jesus said, only those that endure to the end shall be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody got to preach this truth. That means you got to preach the word. You got to teach the word. <laughs> Are you with me? And so verse 13 says, Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home. Because you believed. <laughs> That's the key. Do you believe out there? Jesus said to this Roman officer, because you believed, it has happened. Past tense. It's already done. Because of your faith, because of your trust in me, because you believed in me, it has happened. It's done. We're standing here talking to crowds, but your child is healed. Your servant is healed. And the young servant was healed that same hour. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And that is the power of God that we want to hang on to. Are you with me? <laughs> now, this, again, this next piece of scripture is deliverance, y'all. This is the power of deliverance no matter what you're going through no matter who you're praying for, no matter the circumstance or situation, <laughs> we serve a God that sits on a throne with all authority and he is still in 100% control of everything. There's nothing he doesn't see. Nothing he doesn't know. He's an all-knowing, all-seeing, all-caring, all-loving, all-powerful God that we serve. And for anybody to preach anything different, shame on them. I, I want to go to this study guide um, before we go into uh, verse 14 to get what we just read. The Roman officer, this is a study guide for verses 5 and 6. The Roman officer could have let many obstacles stand between him and Jesus. Pride, Oh, yeah, I'm the slave master, and I'm a centurion. I tell you what to do, right? And you better do it. Pride, doubt, can I come to Jesus? Really? Will he accept me? Money, how much is it going to cost? <laughs> they should put that in the website. <laughs> in some of these ministries today, these buildings with the crosses on top, they could have a menu. If you need your healing today, it's going to cost this amount. If you want it in three days, it'll cost that amount. I mean, while they're out there lying and cheating and stealing in their greed to make all this money, might as well make a menu. <laughs> Let the people know what they got to sell to get their miracle, right? 
<laughs> and now, Steve, I need to stop talking like that because the next thing you know, <laughs> they will make a menu. You see, shouldn't give me any ideas. Watch this. The Roman officer could have let many obstacles stand between him and Jesus. We don't want any obstacles standing in between ourselves and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing. Okay? Pride, doubt, money, language, distance, time, self-sufficiency, power, race. But he didn't. If he did not let these barriers block his approach to Jesus, we don't need to either. And here it comes. Get ready for a step finger right between the ribs from the study guide. What keeps you from Christ? No barriers. No fences. No walls, y'all. The veil came down. We're free to come to him. All day long, any time you feel the need, glory be to God, we're welcome. There's a freedom in Christ. Amen. Free to come to him anytime, 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And he wants you. That's the sweetest part of this relationship. He wants you to come to him with everything, anything. We're going to get more of that as we continue in this powerful gospel of Matthew. I have another study guide for verses 8 through 12. This Roman officer, also called a centurion, was a career military officer in the Roman army with control over 100 soldiers. Roman soldiers of all people were hated by the Jews for their oppression, control, and ridicule. Yet this man's genuine faith amazed Jesus. This hated Gentile's faith put to shame the pompous piety, piety <laughs> of many of the Jewish religious leaders. I got another one for verses 10 through 12. Jesus told the crowd, that many religious Jews who should be in the kingdom would be excluded because of their lack of faith. Entrenched in their religious traditions, they could not accept Christ and his new message. We must be careful not to become so set in our religious habits that we expect God to work only in specified ways. Don't limit God by your mindset and lack of faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have two more. Faithful people of God from all over the world will be gathered to feast with the Messiah. You can read that in Isaiah 25 and 6 and uh, Isaiah chapter 55. The Jews should have known that when the Messiah came, his blessings would be for Gentiles too. And you can read Isaiah 66 and 12 and Isaiah 19. Uh, but this message came as a shock because they were too wrapped up in their own affairs and destiny. In claiming God's promises, we must not apply them so personally or culturally that we forget to see what God wants to do to reach all the people he loves. Every human being that we meet is eligible. <laughs> In our eyes, that we can speak to them and tell them all about this free gift of salvation. All people. Now, in this society back then, where we just read this scripture, Jews hated everyone that wasn't Jewish. <laughs> they hated everybody. And we still see that trait in them today. 
You can't be a servant of the Most High God and hate because God is love. And this free gift of salvation, the cross, <laughs> what Christ did on that cross to save us from our sins, to save us from a burning hell, that's for everyone. Everyone. So we can't allow this hatred into our heart. Look how it's being spread around today. We hate you because you ain't got no money. Well, we hate you because you got money. <laughs> we hate you because you live down there. Well, we hate you because you live up there. We hate you because of the color of your skin. Well, we hate you right back for the color of your skin. <laughs> you see? We hate you because you don't have a good job. Well, we hate you because you got a good job. You hate us? We'll hate you right back. <laughs> Look how it's flowing. Look what Satan is doing. Throughout our communities, our cities, our states, our country, and all around this world, keeping the people divided by hate. You see? It's gotten to the point where other countries, they don't care what color you are, who do you get on your knees to? We hate you because you don't. Pray as we do to who we say is God. Hate you so much, they'll kill you. And now it's getting to a point. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? Ain't none of your. What? Ain't none of your. Who, who's that? They were on the ballot? Ain't none of your business, fool. <laughs> right? <coughs> Well, we hate you because you didn't vote the way we did. Did you take the shot? No. Well, we hate you. <laughs> Look at the ridiculousness, the ignorance of hate. Hate you for any reason. Are you going to hate me because I had a bowl of sugary frosty flakes this morning? <laughs> Is that on the hate list? Because about everything else is. You hate me because my opinion's different than yours. Right? I don't agree with you. You said, okay, that a banana split is three scoops of vanilla ice cream with a banana split in half on each side of the bowl, and you put strawberry and chocolate and some other flavored syrup on that last one, pineapple, I think it is, sprinkled with nuts and put cherries on top with whipped cream. You call that a banana split. I disagree. Oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> a real banana split has one scoop of vanilla. One scoop of strawberry and one scoop of chocolate ice cream. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We all grew up in different places, but yet they can fuss over what a true banana split is or whether when you make chocolate chip cookies, the recipe calls for one cup, but because you put two cups, because the, the kids love two cups of chocolate chips in their chocolate chip cookie. They don't want to miss a bite. <laughs> they don't want to take one bite and not get a chocolate chip in their little mouth. Because my recipe is different, I should be hated. That's where it's getting you. It's where it's getting. And look how ridiculous it sounds. It's almost comedic. <laughs> comedic. Right? What people are fussing about today. And yet, this is being pushed down with a purpose. To divide us all. 
divide and conquer. If the people can't get together, then we can run over the people and do anything to them we want. Let's keep them divided. You see? And so, now, getting back into what this study guy said, see, because people are coming from all over the world, they speak different languages, they look different, they eat different. In my heart, growing up, I love people that look different because I look different. And I love to eat what they're eating. I always love eating, tasting a new thing. And I love talking to them because you can learn where they came from, what it's like, where they lived, compared to where we, we are. So we're sharing information that helps us all grow. That's the beauty of being different. Now they want to manufacture us, and they don't have that manufacturer's right. Only God manufactures people, but they want to make people all the same. And you shut up and you listen and you do what we tell you is right. And what they're telling us is sinful. And we know that because we have this truth here. You see how you can twist up a society. Their purpose is to eliminate God, which destroys the families. And what do they want? Little robots? to do their bidding, where does this end? It's a sickness. It's a sadness. It breaks the heart to see people get this greedy. To want to have this much power over other people's lives. Who do you think you are? All of us are going to have to stand before God's throne. And that throne has all real power behind it. This little power you think you got. It ain't nothing compared to God's power. But look at Rome, look at Israel, and look at God right in the middle of it. And he's saying to all of them, place your faith in me and live forever in my kingdom. You see? I got another study guide here. Amen. Let me see if I finish this. Uh, this is for verses 11 and 12. Matthew emphasizes this universal theme. Jesus' message is for everyone. Get that in your spirit. This gospel that we preach is for everyone. And we don't pick and choose. God leads us to somebody. They may look different. They may be from a different area or part of life or society. They could be rich. They could be poor. They could be in between. They could be anything. This message is for everyone. We need that. So as we go through these last days, this tribulation, we're still doing his work. And it don't matter who the Lord draws in front of us. There's no barriers to who we will minister this powerful, life-saving message to. You see? He said, blessed are they that are doing my work when I return. So obviously there's work for us to do. Not only strengthening, encouraging, and caring, and loving, and being there for each other as the body of Christ, his bride, whom he's returning for, but also looking for any low-bearing fruit in these last days, those without the mark that can be saved. Amen? And so the Old Testament prophets knew this. You can see Isaiah 56, verse 3 uh, and 6 through 8, and Isaiah 66, verse 12 and 19. Malachi 1 and 11. But many New Testament Jewish leaders chose to ignore it. They chose to ignore it. They chose. I agree with the study guy. They didn't miss who Jesus was. They knew exactly who he was. They rejected who he was by choice. You see? Each individual has to choose 
or accept or reject the good news. And no one can become part of God's kingdom on the basis of heritage or connection. Having Christian parents is a wonderful blessing, but it won't guarantee you eternal life. You must believe in and follow Christ. The study guide is preaching. I'm going to stop there. I thought we would go on. I want to stop there and let that sink in. Let's slow walk through this powerful gospel of deliverance from Matthew. Amen? Because it just gets better and better and better as we go. So we're stopping here at verse 13. We'll pick it up tomorrow in verse 14 because this is powerful. Amen? Oh, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this powerful, powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word that you shared with us on this day. Thank you, Lord. Bury it in our hearts mm, with like barbed wire. Brand it into our hearts with like a Holy Ghost fire that it may remain in our hearts throughout eternity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory be to God and some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much. And you drew them here today with purpose. They've been told by doctors that they got a disease, an illness, a condition in their bodies, a diagnosis. The bodies aren't functioning right, Lord. But you created these bodies, Lord, and you know them through and through. <laughs> doctors still trying to figure out how to fix this. <laughs> you already know. You don't practice medicine, Lord. You just heal and like you heal for the last two days. We know why you brought him here. We know what you're up to, Lord, because we know your heart. We know you want all your children healed and made whole. <laughs> That's why you brought them. And they've been told, Lord, by these doctors, in some cases, there is no cure. But we know you are our cure all. There's nothing you can't heal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for that. The doctors and clinics might be bewildered, but Lord, <laughs> you know all. Thank you. And Lord, some of them have been told names so long they can't even pronounce. They got to use initials to describe what they've been told. They have, some of them are in extreme pain, Lord, due to the condition in their body, this disease that they carry. They can't do for you like they'd like to, Lord. But we know your heart. We know your love. We know your will. We know your way. And we're going to speak it right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, even if you got multiple things going on in your body, uh, -uh not the one, all of it, all of it gone. In the mighty name of Jesus, from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet, in every area of your body, whole and complete, right now you are healed in Jesus' precious <laughs> And mighty name, glory be to God, hallelujah. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much, and you drew them here today with purpose. Oh, Lord. Satan got them bound. Got a yoke around their neck that is choking them out, and they can't do for you. They in bondage, your Lord, a stronghold in their lives. They can't break free, chained up by the enemy they are. And try as they might, and some of them using all their strength for years, 
can't loosen those chains. <coughs> but Lord, we know your heart. We know your love. We know your will. We know your way. We know what you up to. You about to cut them all loose. <laughs> Break every yoke. Because, Lord, you are the anointed one. And it is the anointing that breaks the yokes. And we thank you for placing that anointing upon this ministry, upon my life, that your people may be free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it could be this drug or that drug or this drug or that drug. It could be a combination of drugs and you strung out and can't stop. It could be alcohol, pornography, lying, stealing, cheating. It could be <laughs> fornication or adultery or some sexual lifestyle you know you're not supposed to be involved with. Pornography, gambling. It could be a prescription. And you're in the battle of your life trying to get off of it. It could be a prescription. If you do stop taking it, it will take your life. Oh, oh Satan got many traps for God's people. All kind of yokes of bondage. You might have everything listed above. It's okay. The anointing breaks every yoke. And we declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus Every yoke broken right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory be to God. Every stronghold torn down right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Every chain ripped off right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And you are now free. Glory. No withdrawals, no monkey on your back, and no regrets in Jesus' precious and mighty name. You're free. Free to live this word, become this word, walk this word, be a walking gospel with nothing holding you back ever again. In Jesus, precious and mighty name, thank you, Lord. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much. And you brought them here today with purpose. Oh, Lord, sit Satan still got them bound. Prisoners they are, not necessarily in an institution, but in their emotions, their hearts, their spirits, their minds. They're told they got PTSD, anxiety, depression, all kind of stuff, Lord. But we know you. We know your heart, Lord. We know your love. We know your will. We know your way, and we know what you're up to. You want them free as well. Those that Christ has set free are free indeed. Glory be to God. Walk in the freedom of Christ. Come on, somebody. And we declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. ADHD gone right now. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone. In Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Bipolar, tripolar, quadpolar. I don't know how many polars they got. All that gone right now. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' name. Paranoia gone right now in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. I'm out of names. I don't know any other names. If they've given you any other name or multiple names, all that gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and you are now free. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And some of these, Lord Jesus, that you love and adore so much. And you drew them here today with purpose. Oh, Lord, they in the dark place. They went in there on purpose, and they don't want to come out. They tired of being brutalized, abused, beaten and scorned and cussed at, raped, terrorized. They can't take it no more. They don't want any more pain dished out into their lives. They can't stand another heartbreak. Their hearts are shattered, Lord. Can't take any more. And therefore, they went into that dark place. 
And Lord, I was in one for 50 years, and you brought me out. Thank you, Jesus. And I know you'll do the same for each and every one of them. It is your will. We know you. You want all your people free, that they can serve you with everything they are, with nothing holding them back. We thank you for that. And that dark place they're hiding in, you got the address. You know their name. You love each and every one of them. And, Lord, you're the light of the world that men would not stumble. The glory of God, the bright morning star. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Go to each one of them right now, Lord, and light that place up with you. It ain't dark no more. Lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them out of those corners and onto their feet and into your loving and caring, forgiving and all-powerful arms. Grab them, hold them, hug them, squeeze them tight, Lord. Don't let them go. Whisper in their ear, I got you, child. Lead them out of that place into a new life. Let up by you in Jesus precious and mighty name we pray in the church said together amen amen and amen glory be to God hey we'll be back tomorrow till we do can you do us a teeny weeny tiny little minuscular boo boo of a favor have a good day a nice day a wonderful day, a fantastic day, an awesome day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>